FTX founder Sam Bankman Freed has been sentenced to 25 years in prison for his crypto fraud scandal. He was also ordered to pay $11 billion in forfeiture at his sentencing on Thursday. SBF was found guilty of stealing $8 billion from customers in the cryptocurrency exchange he founded. Before sentencing, the 32-year-old, formerly known as the Crypto King, New York Judge Lewis Kaplan said there is a risk that this man, SBF, will be in the position to do something very bad in the future and said he had never seen a performance like Bankman Freed's trial testimony. Judge Kaplan said if SBF was not, quote, outright lying during his testimony, then he was at least evasive. Kaplan added, there is absolutely no doubt that Mr. Bankman Freed's name right now is pretty much mud around the world. Bankman Freed plans to appeal his conviction and sentence, CNBC reports. SBF was also a major political donor per public records. He contributed more than $70 million to election campaigns in 18 months. According to Time magazine, he gave at least $40 million to politicians and PACs, mostly Democrats, before the 2022 midterm elections. So we've covered Sam Bankman Freed on this show before. I think 25 years makes sense. Prosecutors were recommending 50 to 60. I don't think Sam Bankman Freed is going to be able to get out in 25 years and enter a financial world or if you can call the crypto world a part of the financial world, it's kind of something else entirely. And people will regard him as a genius and be willing to work with him again. But I do consider how a lot of cryptocurrencies work and how a lot of crypto investors think. And they might believe that this kind of scheme is genius, though illegal. So I just I don't know if he can get out and do something dangerous again. I don't know if people are going to trust him and want to work with him once he gets out. Yeah, I I agree. I think 25 years sounds about right. It was, as you put it, a little bit less than what um, what the prosecutors were trying to get. But still, he won't be out of prison until he's at least in his 50s. Um, So I agree. The idea that he would be able to go back to running these schemes seems pretty unlikely. But we've seen crazier things happen. Um, He, of course, has this history of being a huge political donor. Um, I know some Democrats have said that they were either returning the money or donating it to charity. I'd like to follow up and see if all of them have indeed given back the money that they received from Sam Bankman Freed, because as it turns out, a major part of his embezzlement was taking money that had been invested in the cryptocurrency app, transferring it to his philanthropic philanthropic endeavors, as he put them, and then donating that money to political campaigns. And uh, one of his, uh, his officials, the FTX director of engineering, testified um, that he made these contributions to Democrats for reasons relating to optics. Um, that was according to a trial transcript posted by Inner City Press. And he has said on Zoom uh, interviews before that he basically was trying to play the game with the way that he was giving all of these political donations out like candy, gave tens of thousands of dollars to the Biden campaign. And this is something we see not just in the crypto world, but also in big tech more generally, where they are usually donating massive sums of money to exactly the politicians that are in charge of regulating their industry. And then, uh, you know, showing up to Congress and playing it like they're on opposite sides of the of the political divide, like they're basically adversaries when so many of the people who are questioning them have received massive donations to their campaigns on behalf of these companies. And it just creates this inherent conflict of interest that the people who are supposed to be in charge of making sure that these industries are operating legally, that they are not taking advantage of American consumers, have uh, have a financial benefit to making sure that they're allowed to make as much money as possible at the expense of the average American. It's the classic game of lobbying for deregulation or lack of regulation. When you have Deb Fisher, senator from Nebraska, who's chair of the Surface Transportation Committee, should be responsible for regulating railroad transportation, her top four donors are railroads. Union Pacific is her number one donor. Of course, the largest rail yard in the world is in North Platte, Nebraska. But this person, someone who's taking this amount of money from railroads, should not be tasked with regulating them. She's literally paid not to. 
Similarly, we had the Stablecoin Act introduced to Congress by Rashida Tlaib, written by lawyer Rowan Gray, was a, a great bill that ensured the kind of collapse that hurt participants in crypto investing. I don't know if you can call them consumers because there's no real product there, but investors of cryptocurrency, they would have been protected by the same kind of regulations that banks have to abide by because a stable coin is supposed to have a one-to-one -one match to the dollar to make it easier to trade without purchasing cryptocurrencies with other cryptocurrencies. Instead, you have this coin, which is theoretically stable. When it had a, a huge cash investment almost overnight after losing one-to-one -one backing in the dollar, the market panicked. There was this kind of run of people pulling out their money. And that's really what exposed the major cracks in Sam Bankman frieds cryptocurrency infrastructure. FTX had their signature coin, the FTT. It lost 80% of its value in a very short amount of time. And this caused a panic, especially because his investment firm, Almeida, had loans, huge amounts of loans. This was a $2 billion investment firm uh, that were backed in FTT tokens, the signature token of his other company, FTX. And so he was sort of hedging his, his loans against his own made up money. There's no liquidity to cryptocurrency. It's an asset that fluctuates tremendously. So he created this, this house of cards that collapsed almost immediately, but he paid for deregulation when I think some of these laws would have protected his company from the collapse it experienced. Yeah, uh, Maxine Waters, she was uh, the ranking financial services committee member. Um, I think she still is. She blew him a kiss when he showed up to testify in Congress and said some pretty interesting things about Sam Bankman Freed after he was first arrested for allegedly engaging in this fraud, well, now convicted of the fraud. Um, she was asked if Democrats who received money from him should return it. And she said, well, I don't want to get into that. As a matter of fact, both sides have received donations, which is technically true, but the amount given to each was was drastically different. And then uh, just a month later, in December of 2022, when she was still the chair of the Financial Services Committee, they were trying to get Sam Bankman Free to come in and testify about the collapse of FTX. And she said that she was not going to subpoena him and basically was just going to try to get him to come in voluntarily. And so there was definitely this perception that they had some kind of personal relationship outside of just her work on the Financial Services Committee that was perhaps swaying how she was treating him as this whole thing was collapsing. And that's always obviously a concern and in some cases a reality when these politicians get to pocket big bucks from the people that they're supposed to be holding accountable on behalf of the American people. Right, it really exposed for a lot of people just this idea of, of what money is, what currency is, should crypto be called a currency when there's nothing of value backing it up, it gets its value entirely from the investment of fiat currencies, so currencies issued by a, a government being invested into it. It gets its value from dollars and euros and yuan. And so when you look at what's happened with cryptocurrency, it's very obvious why it, it needs regulation because you have a group of people, people like Elon Musk, who did have to get through a lawsuit. I honestly don't know the stage of the lawsuit right now. It's very possible it's settled. But he was sued for how he was always using his public presence to tweet about Dogecoin, get a bunch of people to invest in it. He clearly had money invested in it and just use the public frenzy around his persona to make a bunch of money off of convincing people to invest in this cryptocurrency, which people got little to nothing in return because when it crashed, you don't really have much to do other than pull your remaining dollars out of it. A lot of the people that invested it in Dogecoin didn't have the money to lose. It's the same kind of story with, you know, FTX's tokens, which in the industry were called SAM coins because he was leveraging or rather collateralizing billions of dollars of loans against the FTX issued coins. It's kind of this get rich scheme, not for regular everyday people investing in crypto, but for the people creating the tokens. And so I'm not against alternative currencies to the dollar. I think local currencies are great, but in these universities that have their own currencies, their own buckaroos to be used by students on campus, there's something of value that's traded in exchange for the currency. 
you're either doing a job, you're purchasing a smoothie at a smoothie shop and the same, you know, currency is paid to the employees working at the smoothie shop. It's a closed economy. It's a community where things of real value are traded for the currency. That is a currency. Crypto is not one. And I think a lot of people learned a really hard lesson with this one. Yeah, I think uh, some of the celebrities that were uh, named in this lawsuit include Larry David, Tom Brady, Giselle Bunchton, Steph Curry, Shaquille O'Neal, Naomi Osaka. Um, definitely not a good look for them. We're going to be back with more rising after this.